Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So, long time no see. I haven't posted a dollar paint in a minute, and that's just because my schedule got a little bit wacky with Halloween videos. I don't even know if you can call what I have a schedule. <laughs> it's more like I just try to get videos up a little bit sooner than the gap between this video and my last video. But I'm back, and I have a new doll for you guys. I've mentioned in the past that I don't just love repainting dolls. I also am genuinely really interested in dolls like if there's a new doll line i get really excited about it um and because of that and because i mostly repaint monster high dolls and also ever after high dolls um when there's a rare monster high doll i get really excited <laughs> if y'all know a bit about the monster high doll line then you would know that isi dawn dancer is one of the more rare dolls that you could find she's really really pretty um she pricey, <laughs> but she's a really cool doll and she only had one release. We're going to be turning her into her truest of forms, a fawn slash satyr. I think a satyr is a man deer, a deer man. <laughs> Don't quote me. I've been wanting to make this doll for so long that I can't remember if I was inspired by anyone specifically to make this doll or if I just wanted to make one of these. So I'm just gonna say that Enchantarium, Etalon, and Josephine's Creatures all have really beautiful fawn satyr dolls on their channels and y'all should check them out and I'll link them down below. A little tidbit about my ISI Dawn Dancer is that she actually uh, came with a Cleo arm and nude um, and she was still pretty pricey, but yeah, she doesn't. she's missing one of her arms. This doll actually has a really awesome feature where her feet are hoofed um that's pretty unique to this doll i mean i know that they have done like <laughs> weird foot stuff that sounds uh not appropriate but they've done some like different foot stuff with monster high dolls like which one has big feet one of them has really big feet <laughs> but this one has hoof feet and they're so cool i did the basics of customizing so I cut all her hair off, which I actually saved because it was in really nice condition. Um, and then I put her in hot water so that I could pop her head off. I popped her head off. And then I scraped around the inside of her head with a screwdriver to loosen up all the glue in there. After the glue was loose, I pulled all the glue out through her neck hole with needle nose pliers. To get the paint off her face, I wipe her face with a cotton round and acetone. I wanted to change the placement of her ears because I thought it would be just like so thinking cute if they were on the side of her head. So I'm cutting off her ears with an X-Acto blade. If you all saw my dragon doll, then you would know that I didn't use wire as like a structural base for the ears or the horn. And it was a mess. I just kept having to glue it back on over and over again. Uh, which sucks. So for this, I am totally using wire. Um, I just stabbed a hole through the ears with a really big needle and then I put a wire into that hole. Y'all just can't tell me that ears are not cuter on the side of the head. They're just so damn cute. For her horns, I'm basically doing the same exact process that I did with the ears. So I'm stabbing a hole through her head and then stabbing a wire into that hole that I poked. I'm going to be sculpting on top of the ears and the horns with epoxy sculpt. So I don't really want the ears and the horns to move around while I'm doing that. So I'm just adding a little bit of super glue to those areas. With my best friend, I swear to God, me and epoxy, epoxy sculpt, who is she? Me and epoxy sculpt have developed a very close relationship during quarantine, okay? Um, I never used her prior to quarantine and now I use her all the time. And I just feel like we've really developed something. <laughs> so I just wanted there to be a little bit more of a smooth transition on our ears. So I'm just making a little bit more of a smooth transition. Do y'all see this like, like little wood thing? This is like my 
like number one tool with epoxy sculpt it just smooths out everything really well um so yeah i don't know if you don't have one of these i would get one On to the horns. So the first thing I'm doing is I am taking the epoxy sculpt and I'm just like wrapping that around the wire. I'm getting the general shape that I want. I wanted her horns to be textured and also look like there wasn't like a smooth transition from the horn and then the head so i'm basically taking that wood tool that i love so much and i am just mushing the epoxy sculpt down onto like her forehead head area um, and then i'm also taking that wood tool that i have and i am sort of doing some flicks of texture up onto the horn so that they look a little bit rough and rigid I wanted her horns to have more ridges to them, so I'm taking little snakes of epoxy sculpt and I'm wrapping those around her horns, evenly spacing them out as I go. I actually really dig how they came out. I really like sculpting horns. Like it's just kind of a pleasant experience. You can do so many different types of things with them to get so many different types of looks. We gotta paint these horns in these ears. So I'm laying down a base coat of black on the horns. I'm using acrylic paint, by the way, if that wasn't obvious, but I painted in her ears and I have a bit of a problem matching the skin tone of dolls uh, with acrylic paint that I mix together. I think because it usually ends up a little bit darker and I think that's because I'm not taking into account that acrylic paint generally dries a little bit darker than the color that you lay down. It's not the biggest of deals because I'm going to be blushing the whole face, um, but I'm just going to keep that in mind for next time. With dark brown acrylic paint, I'm just adding a little bit of that to her horns. I put copper paint on top of that because I just have a need to make everything in my life shiny. Moving on to the face up, so I spray the doll three times with Mr. Super Clear, waiting 15 minutes between each spray and wearing a respirator mask, and I begin sketching in her face. I begin by sketching in the eyes with a red pencil and I'm making them a little bit smaller than the molded on eyes because the molded on eyes are kind of like real, real, real big and I just don't quite think it suits her face very much. I'm also making the inner corner of her eye kind of pointy instead of rounded because if you look at deers, that area is just pointy so that's why I'm doing it. This is gonna sound strange, but for her eyes or her irises, I wanted to make it so that they look like they're kind of, not cross-eyed, but pointing a little bit more towards the inner portion of her face because it just gives the face a little bit more of a sweeter look. I don't know if I've accomplished this, but someone who does this really well is Sugar Lump Gift Shop on Instagram. If you guys haven't checked her out. Um, she does this effect really well. I don't quite know if I achieved this look. Um, I just feel like there's a really thin line between getting this effect for your dolls and then them looking cross-eyed, so I don't know. They turned out how they turned out, I guess. I'm 
I'm blushing her cheeks, forehead, nose, and chin with a medium peachy pink color. Something that I wanted to mention earlier that I think is kind of cool is that this ISI Dawn Dancer character um, in the Monster High universe, her backstory is actually that she's Native American. And I think that's so cool. Like, I don't know, are there a ton of like Native American dolls? I feel like probably not. And I feel like also like her skin tone is just this beautiful sort of like reddish brown color that I think is one of my favorite in terms of the deeper toned complexion dolls from Monster High. So I was just Googling ISI Dawn Dancer and something that I think is kind of cool that I just found out. If you guys are like me, then you may have been like, why is her name like ISI? Or you see, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but she has a very like unique name and it's because it means deer in Choctaw Native American. The more you know, y'all, I'm just saying, it's kind of interesting. I'm shading around her eyes, nose, and lips with brown shades. An effect that I really love giving the lips of my dolls is taking a pointy q-tip and just some red pastel and stamping that down on the upper and lower lip to get, make it more pigmented in those areas so that it sort of looks like her lips are bitten a little bit. Hi, hello. I like veins and I give them to literally every doll so this doll is no exception. I've mentioned in the past that I think I'm a little bit cursed because every time I try to do purple eyes, they just end up being blue. So with this, I was determined to make her eyes actually purple. Um, and I picked up a dark purple pencil, a medium tone purple pencil, and a light purple pencil. And I did the shading with those three shades and like literally no blue, no any other colors because I just wanted them to be uh, purple and not blue or any like kind of pink tones in them. To intensify the color on the eyes, I again took my pointy q-tip and I'm just tapping on some purple pastels on top of the eyes. The eyes are really dark with shading, so to bring back some more of that definition, I'm going in with a white watercolor pencil and I'm adding lines of highlights in the inner corner, on the eyelid, above the eyelid. Um, just to brighten up those areas so that you can see more definition.
I'm kind of bummed because I went in with a brown pencil to attempt to give her freckles. Um, I decided sort of last minute that I wanted those and I didn't really have enough time or not enough time but like at this stage I don't add that with the splatter effect I do that like in the very beginning so I just thought it would look a little weird so I tried to do it with pencil and you just literally like can't see it we're adding tons of like glitter chunky glitter all over the face and pigments and stuff so I took my Macro Pearlix pigment, put that all over the face, and then I took one of my coppery pigments and put that on top of the lips. An issue that I had uh, while doing the face up is that the horns were too low down, like they should have been higher up on her head. So when I went to do the eyebrows, I like barely had any room and they're like, Ooh, they're so close to each other. Just really close. It makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't like when things are like that crowded. By the way, y'all, if you are curious about what brushes I use when I'm doing like little tiny detail work, that is in the description box. An effect I really love doing is taking my rose gold metallic watercolor pencil, it's a Derwent watercolor pencil, and putting that on the um, waterline. I'm not doing it like excessively or anything, but it gives it a shiny look and I think it looks really pretty. Now for her uncomfortable eyebrows again, I'm adding little flicks of hair into the eyebrows. I at first decided to make them like little tiny eyebrows, but later on I go in and extend the tail a bit. I add lines of highlights going toward the pupil with white watercolors um, and I feel like with this you need like some of the tiniest of tiny brushes to get this effect. Also it helps to hold your breath. <laughs> this is like one of the most meticulous things I feel like I do with uh, repainting faces but if you mess up um, something that's important to keep in mind is that you can wipe it away if you're using watercolor with like a q-tip or whatever so it's not a huge deal. I like wipe it away all the time and then redo it. I specifically lately have been really enjoying using a Faber-Castell, um, like from the brand Faber-Castell watercolor pencil for lashes. It's a little bit harder than my other uh, black watercolor pencils and I just feel like it gives you a really nice fade when you flick out the lashes.
add a couple flicks of brown watercolor paint to the eyebrows for hair. I feel like you can barely see it, but I do like how natural and sort of soft the brows came out on this repaint, even though they're like uncomfortably close to the horns. It makes me uncomfortable. With metallic rose gold watercolor as well as white watercolor, I'm just adding a couple dots of highlights to the waterline. Taking some Vallejo gloss varnish, I'm applying this to her lips. I've actually totally stopped applying gloss to the eyes just because, I don't know, I don't have the best experience with it. I find that it's hard to take photos and um, sometimes it just looks a little weird after a while. So I've just completely stopped applying gloss to that area. This is how her face turned out. And as you can see, I did extend her eyebrows a little bit. I just thought it suited her more. For the hair, we're going to be creating wefts with this like reddish orangey acrylic yarn that is beautiful. This is like one of my favorite yarns that I have, um, but I'm going to be creating wefts with it. And when I brush it out, I'm actually not going to be straightening it because this yarn has this really pretty quality where when you brush it out, it stays kind of wavy and a little bit poofy and just really does look like a natural wavy hair texture. I originally wanted to reroute her hair, um, but you can't really reroute when you do epoxy sculpting on a face um it just it's gonna pop off even if you have the wire there i've seen people sculpt after rerouting um and i commend those people because i don't think i'd be able to do that it just like i feel like it'd be way too messy but it seems like people do it and they don't really have a problem so maybe that's an option After I'm all done making the wefts and they're all dry and stuff, I'm taking my Elmer's glue all and I am just gluing the wefts to her scalp. I did end up painting her scalp with brown acrylic paint because if there's any gaps in like where I'm applying the wefts, if you have the scalp a similar color to your wefts, it just doesn't look as obvious um, as opposed to like it being a flesh color. This is how her hair turned out and I love it. It's like large and in charge and I just love this like wavy poofy hair texture. I feel like it looks so natural. Upon looking at her face with the hair, I decided that her face was kind of lacking something and I've never done this on a face before, but I decided to give her one of those like anthro anthropomorphic noses, the little animal noses. Um, so I just colored in the bottom of her nose with a brown watercolor pencil. On to the body. So like I mentioned earlier, this doll came with a Cleo arm and hand and I really kind of hate Cleo like the first wave I think it's first wave Cleo she has like these freakishly tiny hands and they just sort of bother me a little bit so I was gonna replace them with these arms but they're big for some reason it actually took me a while to figure out that I think they might be like Nefra's hands so they're like the big sister body type hands I ended up just replacing it with some Gulia arms and that ended up working out I wanted to give her some digi-degrade legs, so I am cutting her legs so that I can reattach them in the position that I want. I'm also cutting a little chunk off of the legs um, because the monster high legs, the lower portion of them are kind of like really long, and I just figured this would make it look a little bit more proportioned. We're drilling holes in her upper butt area for her tail and also the lower part of her lower leg um, so that I can take a wire and put that into her legs so that I can reposition them. Thank you. 
I attached the wire with a wee bit of hot glue. Um, I actually should have gone back after this, after it was like hot glued in place and gone over it with epoxy glue, but I didn't because I make bad choices sometimes and it just makes it so that it's it was kind of annoying to sculpt because it just wasn't the best hold in those areas. So if you're creating a doll like this, um, I recommend going over the hot glue with some stronger glue. Once again, taking my BFF epoxy sculpt, I am sculpting a little pointy tail on her butt and I'm also uh, sculpting on top of her legs so that they don't look so creepy. Honestly, after sculpting them, they still, they still look pretty creepy. <laughs> Once the sculpting was all done on the tail and legs, I sanded them a little bit, but not completely. Um, I definitely could have sanded them more, but it's also just not very necessary for this because I'm going to be putting tons of yarn in those areas and it's going to completely cover it up. I painted over the legs, tail, and her gulia arm with acrylic paint. I wanted her hoofs to be a little bit like more obvious and not so flesh tone because that's a little weird. Um, so I'm just painting them black. Here's how she turned out. Her sculpting is chunky, but listen, it does the job, okay? We're gonna be covering it. I blush her body as per usual with the same color pastels that I used on her face. I wanted her legs to be furry, so I'm hot gluing tons of yarn wefts um, up her legs. I'm basically working in sort of like a layered effect where I'm wrapping them around and applying them layer by layer. I'm cutting them as I go because it can just get really intense. So I fully was not prepared for how kind of miserable this process was. Um, for some reason, I thought it would just like take me maybe one night to do but it took me forever this took me like three days to attach all this yarn and i kept having to make wefts and then it wasn't enough and i would put it up there with sort of when i was um gluing uh feathers to a doll that sucked this also sucked not quite as much as feathers but it was still sort of a miserable experience <laughs> After all the yarn was applied, I'm taking my X-Acto blade and I'm just sort of shaving the yarn down so that it's not uh, quite as long. And I didn't straighten out the yarn because I sort of liked how like sort of shaggy and um, curly it was. I wanted to show y'all like a little before and after. So um, the, what is that? The left leg is shaved down with the X-Acto blade and then the right leg isn't. I did end up losing some yarn in certain areas, but I just went back in and sort of did a touch up. This is how she turned out once I put her head back on and I really like it. Like her legs are so fluffy. I made her a relatively simple dress um, and I'm just hemming the top of the front of the fabric as well as the bottom and doing the same to the back of the dress. I then sewed the front and the back together at the side seams. 
I decided that her dress needed a little something more, like something at the bottom. So I'm taking this ribbon and I'm unraveling it to get the copper yarn off of it. And then I'm sewing that to the bottom of the dress. The tassel looked a little messy, so I'm just trimming it down. I hot glued that original ribbon that I unraveled to the top of the dress. I thought she'd look really cute with a scarf, so I cut out a strip of olive green fabric and I sewed some fabric to the bottom to make some little dangly bits at the bottom of the scarf. <laughs> I don't know if that's what they're called, but you know, these little dangly bits. I have a strip of this stretchy black tool and I'm wrapping that around her arm and sewing it in place. She has some pretty prominent like holes in her ears and I wanted to cover that up and also make it look like she has earrings. So I'm just putting these little rings, I think they're jump rings, into the holes that are in her ears. I mentioned this in my drag video, but I feel like, listen, I'm decorating her horns with some wire. It just looks cute. I feel like if I had horns, I'd decorate it with wire. So that's what we're doing. As an accessory, I wanted to make her a pan flute because there are a lot of depictions of fawns and satyrs with this type of instrument, but I couldn't really figure out quite how to make it at first because I was like, mm, if I make it out of clay, like if I try to drill a hole because they're like little tubes or whatever, um, it'll probably crack. And the same if I tried to make it out of wood, if I tried to drill a hole, it would probably crack. So I wasn't really sure what to do. And then it occurred to me, and this isn't the most heavy duty solution, that coffee straws would make a perfect pan flute and like it would be a perfect scale for this doll. I actually don't know if these are called coffee straws. I think they're like coffee mixers, but I've used them as straws before. I don't know. <laughs> I cut about five of them out of the straw, having them gradually get bigger as I go. I hot glued each of the pieces together. After I was done hot gluing them, I went back and I put a little coat or a thin coat of Elmer's glue all on top just so that they would have an extra hold. Here she is. So simple. This was like the easiest thing I've ever made, I think, when it comes to doll repainting accessories. Um, I also wrapped a bit of copper wire around it just to add a little decoration. I made a holder for the pan flute out of some faux leather. Um, I cut a strip of it and then I cut a smaller strip and sewed that so that it can hold the pan flute. Like this. So cute. 
I have like a copper leafy ribbon that I thought would look cute as a hair accessory. So I pinned that in place on her head. But at this point I was like, I'm done. But then I was like, no, 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 let's add even more accessories. So I have a bunch of glass bottles that you guys may have noticed a couple repaints. Um, like my dragon has one. And I wanted to use one of those. At first I was like, oh, I use them too often, but I have like 25 of them though. <laughs> you're gonna see them quite a bit i want to use them up i cut out some of this green fabric in little tiny pieces to look like grass and then i have these tiny flowers that i got from daiso and i'm putting a couple of those inside of the glass jar this is actually very inspired by enchantarium's fawn um or Seder. uh they have like a little bottle full of like little plant things and i was like you know what i want to add one of those as well I made a little holder for the bottle as well, basically using the same technique that I did for the pan flute holder. And just when I thought I was done, I remembered I had these little like, these little balls. <laughs> I don't know what they are, but I decided to put a couple of gold and pink ones inside the glass bottle. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it's so cute, it's so dainty. The very last thing that I added was I got these earrings off of Amazon um, and I just put them in her hair as a hair accessory. And with that, she's actually done. I, I'm like pretty happy with how she turned out. Um, she's probably not like my favorite doll. Like I feel like with a lot of customs, the most recent one is my favorite. And I don't think that this is, is like that for me, but I do like her. I think she has like a really sweet little face up. Um, and she fits in with my little fantasy click of dolls and uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about her. Um, like this video if you like this video, subscribe, it makes me happy and I hope you guys are having a beautiful day. 